so today we will be discussing a very important subject that is your lateral condylar fracture lateral condylar fracture of the humerus is very important which happens many times in children and as it is a very a important important in the sense that it is a intra articular fracture means fracture is happening inside the joint so that is why that is why it is more important because integrity of the joint is very important otherwise patients cannot have a very good range of function later on so we will talk on lateral condylar fracture of the humerus and that happens mainly in case of children so let us understand what is the lateral condyle means to us as such we do not have a lateral condyle in case of your humerus while you while you have gone through the osteology class in anatomy we know condyles in the femur condyles in the tibia but as such there is no condyle in the, in the humerus we know in the distal end of the humerus we do have lateral epicondyle capsulum the trochlear capsulum and the medial epicondyle medial epicondyle epicondyle is not condyle so lateral condyle of the humerus is a large tuberculated eminence located at the distal part of the humerus towards the lateral side it extends medially to form the main part of the lower part of yes, the humerus and essentially being a part of this joint mm -hmm. contributes mass for the formation of the joint and his attachment to the radial collateral ligament supinators and the forearm for, 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 for extension of the muscle so that is why it is very important uh, for the integrity of the function of the elbow joint so it comprises 17 percent of the distal humerus fractures and most of the time we used to see these fractures happening to the seven six to seven years boy mostly boys then the girl and since it is an interarticular fracture so most of the time it is a type four type of facial injury what is this solda head is solda head is is a type of your injury of the epiphysis so there are various classification is type one type two type three type four type five type six even and according to the definitions it happens to be most of the time type two or type four we'll talk what is that so what is the mechanism of fractures there are two types of fractures conference here so one is called push one is called pull technique one is push is there while the person is falling from the falling from height and since it is a boy particularly the school the school going children and who is riding a bicycle or falling from height or trees that is the common mode of injury that leads to your push up theory what is push up and push up push and push up that means push the radial hair radius is pushing here it is falling so radius is pushing you know, that push pushing causing the fracture of the lateral part of the uh, humerus that is your push technique another concept is then there is a pull technique also what is pull technique because of the attachment of the muscle of the extensive group of muscle at this area lateral epicondyle and because of the violent spasm of the muscles there may be a wholesome type of fracture which most of the time you find in case of fracture patella or in case of a fracture medial medullus you will find because of the uh, violent spasm uh, contraction of the muscles that leads to evolution of the fractures that happens and there are so there are two types of concept there one is called push one is pushing another is pulling so there are two concepts there so once the patient is coming to you necessarily he or she will have pain restriction of the moment of the elbow joint so then the, you can see the chymosis if we inspect this very chymosis around the elbow joint and if it is this displaced fragment will displaced that can be palpated also in lateral side of the elbow that gives a capital sound also so this is one of the uh, sign of your definitive sign of your fractures the capitus 
So what is MILS 1, MILS 2? Yeah, if you do classify, then necessarily to confirm the diagnosis, you need to go for the X-rays. What did the X-ray you suggest? Your X-ray suggestion is the AP and lateral view of the elbow, which is suffering. Suppose it is suffering, the right side you will say AP and lateral view of the right elbow joint. Right elbow joint? Sometimes it is prudent to go for the X-ray on the other side also, sometimes it may be necessary to compare it, but not regularly. So what is type 1 and type 2 fractures here? As I said, the type 1 and type 2 actually confirm actually type 2 that is your head is, head is classification, of course. Shoulder is classification. Vexal line to lateral to the trochlea and into the capsule or trochlea. See, one fracture is the type 1, where you will find at the group, it is landing at the group. It represents shoulder head is type 4. Another is a type of fractal and extend into the apex of the trochlea. So this is capsulum and this is trochlea. So if the fractal line is in the group, one type, and if it is extending up to that of your uh, trochlea, uh, trochlea, that is your type 2. So you will have two types of your type 4 and type Two, where one is in the group, landing at the fractal in the group, another is extending up to the uh, trochlea because capsulum is involved mostly. Capsulum is a part. So if, if the fractal line is landing at the group between the capsulum and trochlea, that is your type four. And if it is extending up to trochlea, you say it is your type two. So that is one of the uh, classification of the shoulder uh, hairs, depending on the shoulder hairs types of your fracture. One is type two and type four. That is mills one and mills one, mills two. That is one type of your classifications. But what is more important to understand is the displacement of the fragment. So because your treatment of this here entirely depends upon the displacement of the fragment. If the fragment is very much displaced, necessarily you need to go for the operative treatment. And if it is displaced less, so you may not go for your body treatment. So what is this important? So depending upon who you see, if the fracture line is there, there is no much displacement occur at the fracture side. Probably one can think of going for the cosmetic treatment also. But some surgeons prefer to go for in situ fixations by KR. On the other hand, if the fragment is displaced, that is your type two, where fracture line is displaced but not very much. Another group is very interesting. See the fracture line is reversed now. So the original DC fracture line, which was here, fragment is because of the pull of the muscle, the fragment is completely coming out. Sometime while putting in incisions here, you will find then a articular surface is coming in front of you, just putting in incision. Why it is happening so that the fragment is being pulled out from the fracture side by the muscles, that is why the fragment is out. So, depending upon the fracture line, depending upon the fracture line, we have mills one and mills two, fracture one, and depending upon the displacement, it is horizontal and uh, vertical line of your, the displacement is there horizontally or vertically, so the fragment is going to come out. And necessarily, the subsequent model, the sub treatment will enter it depends upon the depends upon the fracture line and fracture displacement. So, what are the investigation? We have already mentioned the investigation. Interesting point to understand the X-ray is there. Since it is a child, the most of the part constituent of this your part are cartilage in the cell, and cartilage does not give very good X-ray film. So cartilage is not very much evident, but the bony part is going to give impressions at the X-ray. That is why if you if you go for this, yeah, if you go for this, if you go for this, yeah, you will find. And then if you go for this, yeah, then you will find. The fragment is your fragment is mm -hmm. 
So uh, that is your displacement, and uh, and you if you go for the X-ray, you will find it really interesting to note here that as the maximum part of the elbow is cartilage in nature. So in radiologically, if you go for it, you will find a small fragment. But actually, the fragment is very big because most of the part of the fragment is cartilage in nature. So cartilage doesn't give very good X-ray. So it is very confusing. The X-ray is very small, but if you open up the fragment, you find a very huge fragment because most of the part uh, we was constituting by this forming by the cartilage, not by the bone. So now the question arises: What is the treatment of choice? Initially, while the patient is coming to you, so first case, one should apply a plaster slab initially, so keeping the limb in the flexion. And also, also, also go for the investigations and do all the necessary things before taking up the patient of a person. But if the fragment is very undisplaced, probably these are the patients can be treated with the conjugate treatment with application of plaster. But on the other hand, if the fragment is displaced, necessarily it has to be fixed. And fixation is most of the time done by the care open induction, internal fixation with care. So displaced fragments in open induction, internal fixations with the care the screws also better done, and that should be continued for a period of almost one month. So what are the complications? Sometimes the fracture may not unite. So and also if you do unite later on, the patients may have some sort of problem like stiffness of the joint, and also is known as this is because of this excess uh, so there is non union there, pregnant is non united. That is one, sometimes very rarely it is being seen. And there is a deformity also, it is being coming out here. That is the bobo is coming, cubitus valgus deformity. The cubitus valgus deformity sometimes happens because of two things. One, there may, there may be involvement of the coat plate, which may be damaged, and there may not be uniform, uniform growing of the uh, uniformity in the growth of the distal humerus. As a result of which lateral part is not growing fast, but the medial part is growing too much. As a result of which there is a deviation of this forearm uh, towards the lateral side. That is your call, cubitus valgus deformity. So male union, protein arrest, elbow stiffness, cubitus valgus deformity. And if it is happening so, cubitus valgus necessarily what is happening? Medial side there is a stress. And this stress needs to be a pull on the ulnar nerve in the medial side, and that condition is known as cardiac ulnar palsy. Means because of the gazelle deformity going on, as a result of which cubitus valgus is taking place, as a result of which this nerve is being stressed, as a result of which the patient may have some sensory or motor deficits, more aggressive type, general ganglion gradually taking place at the course of the ulnar nerve, that is called cardiac ulnar nerve palsy. So thank you. This is your 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 subject for today. It is a lateral condylar fracture is considered to be interdigital fracture. It is very important type of a fracture. Many a time is this being missed misdiagnosis. Why misdiagnosis is possible? Because if you take the X-ray, as I say, since the most of the part of the bone fracture bone is cartilage is necessary, X-ray may not give a very good illusion uh, impressions. And misdiagnosis is not that uncommon. So misdiagnosis is very common, and that leads to your sort of complications later on, uh, non-union, valgus deformity, alarm, arterial palsy, etc. So it is important to understand.